Good evening folks, it's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Saturday, December 29th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time 2018. You're looking at Mount Medapi. Some amazing footage coming out from this December, a December to remember. Amazing lava flow footage. From Gali Jati. If you've come for information, you've come to the right place. The big dig snow removal begins after the storm. Storm Ebony looking glorious. The west bank of the Mississippi River shines brightly at Rotary Park in Brainerd following the three day storm Ebony. More than a foot of snow fell Wednesday, December 26th through Thursday and Friday in the Brainerd Lakes area. Temperatures are expected to drop over the weekend with dangerously cold wind chills on New Year's Eve. As forecast, the snow started to and didn't show signs of stopping. Check out these totals. The heaviest snowfall cut a swath across the state from the southwest to the tip of Arrowhead, where the storm saved its greatest snowfall for the communities along the North Shore. Finland had the state's record recorded with two feet, followed by Grand Marias with 22 inches. Heads up. Now the temperatures are set to plummet. Saturday's highs may reach 12. The cold will usher 2018 out and welcome in the new year. Temperatures will plummet well below zero across north central and northeast Minnesota. The National Weather Service in Duluth reported of expectations for Friday night. Cold wind chills of 10 to 20 below will develop. <clears throat> There's another chance of accumulating snow across much of northern Minnesota Sunday night into Monday. We'll get to it. Albuquerque blizzard leaves many disappointed. A good portion of New Mexico saw heavy snow totals overnight, but much of the metro missed it. The storm dumped anywhere from three to six inches of snow in the uptown area and parts of the tramway nearly got a foot. But Albuquerque sucks anyway. Ski resorts in that region of the state reap the benefits of the blizzard while well, the city missed out. Ski resorts across New Mexico are enjoying the rewards of this week's blizzard. Payarito received 32 inches of global warming goodness in the last three days. Angel Fire gathered 15 inches. Ski Santa Fe and Taos Ski Valley got 10 on Wednesday. More snow predicted for New Mexico. And a week out, we predicted snow to hit El Paso. And the season's first snowfall did blanket that region. Heads up. El Paso turned into a winter wonderland overnight as the season's first snowfall blanketed the borderland. There's the pictures. Heads up. Scenes from the field in West El Paso. I didn't know they could deal with snow there. Apparently they do have plows. Parts of Minnesota could get accumulating snow on New Year's Eve. Sub-zero temps to follow. The wind chill on January 1st will be deep into the negatives. Just as soon as this week's major winter storm exited the region, another one is on its heels. Not quite as deep. The big question right now is where exactly the snow will fall beginning Sunday night. According to the National Weather Service, the same areas were slammed with 12 to 20 inches. We just saw 22 to 24 inches in Thursday's snowstorm, saying the best chance to pick up more snow. We're talking 8, 87% chance of two or more, 91%. Grand Marquis, Ashland, more snow is expected. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. A blast of Arctic air will follow with the frigid temperatures in the 5 below to 5 above range. Strong winds will also create hazardous travel conditions with blowing snow likely reducing visibilities. If the storm system slides a bit further southeast, it could bring snow to the Twin Cities. We'll have to keep an eye on it.
New Year's storm system brings yet another rain snow threat. Epic. Totally fluxed. Rain will make New Year's Eve plans soggy in the east. Frigid temperatures will sting the northern plains and wait till you check out these lows to ring in the new year. Now, it has been historically extremely cold in the New York region for the last several New Year's. And they're going to get a respite this year. Not because of global warming, but because weather and climate are cyclic. Snow will also return to the southwest and upper Midwest. Now, the new storm system, which I don't have a name for yet, will swing across the northern tier of the country, opening up yet another round of rain across the soggy southeast. Check out wet New Year's stormy setup with rain and sleet and hellish stuff up in the upper Midwest here. Current radar in the northwest, Baker City picking up snow, Spokane outside of Seattle, up in the mountains, Portland soggy. Snow will spread south and east into the central Rockies and northern plains while persisting in the northern Rockies and Cascades through the day. Check out your Sunday, Billings, Casper, Idaho Falls, Boise, Salt Lake. All snow in your forecast. Bismarck, you're not left out. Monday's forecast, New Year's, is looking wet through the southeast which is why there is no snow on the ground. We're going to show you these maps in a minute. There's no snow because it's been raining here like a rainforest for days, months, and weeks. Eight feet of rain in many of these regions have already fallen. Jackson, 71, thunderstorms. Nashville, 69, thunderstorms. <clears throat> a soggy 46 in New York for your New Year's. Soggy in Cleveland at 50. Milwaukee's going to be a shite fest. Minneapolis looking for snow. Denver 21 snow. As the clock expires on 2018, the storm system will bring rain to much of the eastern seaboard. Snow will be possible in northern New England and northern Great Lakes and across the Four Corners. Heads up. Temperatures will be bitterly cold across the plains. We're going to look at some of those numbers. Bismarck minus 9. Missoula, 7. Salt Lake, 15. Omaha, 13. With a moisture blanket saturating the East Coast. Heads up. Tuesday's forecast, New Year's Day. Raleigh, 67. Thunderstorms, Atlanta, 63. Freezing behind the front. Chi Town won't even make freezing. Buffalo 39, Banger 39. Gonna be damp and floody up there. Marquette 16. There's your rain forecast. One to two inches expected for thousands of square miles. The heaviest through the Little Rock area south towards Houston. Two to three inches expected in that region. Man, and look at these temps. Holy macaroni. These are your forecast highs. Watch the drop off in Denver. 51 Sunday, 21 Monday for a high. Salt Lake, you're going to go from 37 to 21 by Tuesday. Rapid City, 43 to 17 by Tuesday. Minneapolis, 34 on Sunday for your high. Eight is your high on Tuesday. That is a cold nugget. Albuquerque going to be a high of 20 on your Tuesday. That's your lose day. And that's tonight's first boom. Epic. And that is an object entering near Russia. Say it ain't snow. There it is. <coughs> that is the total snow in North America. It's sitting on the ground as of now. You know how I know? Because I downloaded the data. I'll show it to you in a different form that's more pleasing to the eyes. And if you're a global warmest, you'll love it. But it shows exactly the same thing. Here's her storm ebony dusting up the Midwest. There's the heavy totals. 
22, 24 inches up here in the northeastern tip of Minnesota. And the heavy rains that have been plaguing the northeast have erased this snow cover. This is reducing albedo, but the rest of the Canadian Shield is covered. And we have some heavy snow forming in the Rockies, depleting that drought scenario, thankfully. And it's going to continue. <clears throat> Here are the snow totals in the last 48 hours. And you can see the heaviest snow in New Mexico, clearly. Some areas picking up over three feet. Maine is the winner in the last two days, as well as northern Idaho, western Montana, and the mountains of Washington State. Those of you in Oregon that have been complaining there's no snow in the mountains, <laughs> head out to the northeast of your state where you're buried over the last two days. GFS model showing an amazing system through January 8th. Again, the hardest hit is going to be the upper Midwest with the snow patterns continuing and eastern Canada as well as British Columbia on the models through the first week of January continuing to pick up record snows into Washington and the Olympics. This could be a earth-tilting snow total for the Olympics. We're talking upwards of 100 feet, 200 feet in some areas of British Columbia. That's a crazy number, but I'm being real. We average 55 feet where I live, and I'm all the way down here. <laughs> 55 feet. 200 feet's easy up here. Unless you're Al Gore, who's making me a bunt cake. Al, is the cake ready? Get in your hole. It's not ready, it's cooling. No fooling. And I can actually kick this up to the most recent model. And we'll let this parse through. We have 66 hours we can look at. So, looking through the next 24 hours. What we can see is heavy snow moving through western Montana, northern Idaho. Heads up, Oregon's the winner. Six, you're going to get some snow in the mountains, Oregon. Heavy snow in the Washington mountains. Snow all the way down to 22 degrees, which is Cuba. In the mountains of Mexico on the GFS. If these snows continue to move south and I need to move into the Central America map, that would be awesome. It's awesome. Even some light snow through uh, West Virginia. And then there's New Year's. Boom! So as we approach New Year's, we're going to be seeing a nice thin blanket of snow through much of the upper Midwest, chilly conditions, with a huge Arctic chill behind this. <clears throat> You're going to see snow in upstate New York, most of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, New Year's Day. Hey, hey. And New Mexico is going to get another super blast. Starting on Monday, watch the snow dump back down into New Mex. Heads up. Tex-Mex. And even some snow forecast for PA through your January 5th and the coming weekend. See how this model, this nor'easter develops. These numbers could increase, move south. Looks like Philly, New York, Everybody up in the Northeast getting in on this. Southern Appalachians all the way down to Arkansas. Just ripping them. So we're going to be watching this model and the heavy snows as they goes. That's boom. Al, is it iced lemon? I like lemon cake. Get your hole. He knows I like lemon. I make him use the zest. He uses the zester. He puts the zester in the basket. Weather.gov, Weather Ready Nation map. Snow winds down in the southwest. Another northwest storm this weekend. Look at the watches and warnings across the country. It's insane. This is a freezing fog warning for 10 counties in southern Texas. 
freezing fog. Do not drive. Winter storm watches and warnings through five states up in the northern tier here. Northwest Utah, northern Nevada, most of Idaho, winter storm watches and warnings in the east. Most of western Montana, winter storm watches and warnings. The, ma the mountains of Washington, heads up Wyoming. Freeze watches and warnings for the deserts in southern Nevada, <coughs> southern Cali. Heavy freeze warnings and watches for southern southeast Arizona, Tucson. Cover your cactus. The grand solar minimum dampness is entering your region. <laughs> That's boom. If it were global warming, I don't think there would be freeze and hard freeze warnings in zone 28. Do you? Al, what do you think? Nobody cares what you think. Cold weather to hit Egypt for 72 hours. At least. <laughs> Cairo, a very cold weather is expected on Sunday on the northern parts of the country extending to northern upper Egypt where we've seen snow for the first time in almost a century happen year after year after year. The officials forecast have warned a decline in temperatures and rainfall during the coming 72 hours. There was a decline in temperatures by 4 degrees C before Saturday. Wow. These people are pussies. Sheep don't make it. Frozen taps and bone chilling cold. Cashmere battles. Chidai Katan. It's harshest winter in 30 years. This, however, the winter is harshest in nearly 30 years. On Thursday, people with tons of vegetables and other stuff wore blankets and walked down the road with carts to keep warm. Yeah, they were trying to compost themselves some heat. Sringar, the night temperature was recorded at minus 7.6 degrees, the coldest December night in 28 years. Frozen vegetables were many fears. Seismic update. The world has shrunk completely tiny. Let's blow it up. No quakes of note. We have this activity that started in the Philippines moving north up the mid-ocean ridge here. The Ring of Fire 5.5. Obihiro, Japan. 4.6 notable quake in Kodiak. Kilauea collapsing on itself. 2.9 in Hawaii. Fracking moving as usual. <clears throat> we have an uptick here in the Indonesian Arch just north of the Sunda Strait. So we'll keep an eye on that. Aftershocks in the Philippines 5.3. No damage from that major 7.2 that happened just 24 hours ago. No tsunamis either. Mayut picking up again after a standstill. More regular shocks here. We have a 4.7 kicking off. We're going to be watching this super caldera here in the East African Rift Zone and see what happens as predicted. I fear that all of the sciences multidisciplinary are coming together. We can see Saku erupting live right now on the webcam. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Agung erupting. Many people covering that small out uptick. Fuego, Krakatoa, Medapi, Chevalouche, Ducono, Reventador. Now Chevalouche is up on the Kamchatka. We'll be keeping an eye on that as well. No major eruptions in the last 24 hours. Short-lived explosion at Cleveland as well. Volcanic ash to 5.2 kilometers in Alaska. Just a little puff. This baby can blow much higher. All links below. Ana Krakatau, Indonesia volcano's dramatic collapse being picked up by the mainstream after we put it down over 24 hours ago. 
<laughs> everyone now flaunting the photo that we showed out you yesterday. <laughs> and we'll show it to you again. They had to put dotty circles around it so you could tell what's missing. Here's before, here's after. Not good if you're on this island or over here. Not good if you're anywhere. And if the rest of this blows, the major collapse will be here and here. And then they'll get it again there and there. Whew. That's how that works. Let's check out the Merapi footage. Just watch it through. It's good. It's worth it. Boom! Holla! So look at this mound building. This is called the Volcanic Mound. Uh, and that's going to blow out of there. This is a violent, regularly violent blower outer of material. So this is building and soon will blow out of Merapi. Really sloppy. <clears throat> Hopefully you don't live near there and you don't go there regularly. Here's some more interesting footage of the uh, Anna Krakatau building up and then destruction of a major portion of the island. Most of the volume is missing. Two-thirds of the island is missing. I'll leave you links to all these articles below. And this is the beginning of the uptick. And I believe that the focus of our channel is going to begin to shift towards the end game scenario because the science is laying upon itself where we have higher and higher resolution of the future that we're preparing for. The grand solar minimum it appears to be a minor perturbation in the events that are coming. And we'll explain this in great detail over the coming months. The next year is a year of enlightenment for this channel. We're going to be focusing highly on a multidisciplinary approach of the cosmic catastrophe that we have, all of us, been unraveling through our own avenues and is now coming together in ways that have never been put together before. We're talking all historical texts, all religious uh, doctrines, all mythologies, including new scientific discoveries, old theories and hypotheses that have been discarded because the mainstream cabal doesn't want you to put the pieces together. We're putting them together for you. Piece by piece. And we're over here at the Diehold Foundation website Doug Vogt put together. And here's his research on the geomagnetic reversals. I know a lot of you have seen, have, have been to Ben Davidson's magneticreversals.org. But you need to bring in all the information and come up with your own conclusions. And as we move forward, we're going to be working through this together. I've been looking for a mechanism for what I've seen geologically in the field everywhere that's been happening time immemorial. And there are other pieces to the puzzle. Not all of them fit together. A lot of it doesn't make sense. We will make sense of it once we come together and we can talk it all out, we will get to the next level.
It's always about moving forward, not backward. There is no consensus. There never has been. There is always different camps that get together and move forward with information. Why are we here? To enjoy the experience and to learn. Not to be complacent and comply. The picture is much bigger than you ever imagined. And this is a really good primer to the things we'll be talking about in the future with Doug and others on the implications of the events that occur during these magnetic excursions. It's not always the same type, but it's always the same time. And from my research, the magnetic reversal that occurred 9600 BC around 12,000 years ago that one <clears throat> that was the major magnetic reversal the 100,000 year event and each subsequent reversal is less severe but is exactly the same and what Mr. Vogt says in all of his books, in, in, including his research on geomagnetic reversals, is that the sun micronovas at a very specific period, periodicity, and that's 12,068 years. And this number is very important in his work, 12,068. And 50 years before that, everything starts changing. And the Chan Thomas Adam and Eve story that was classified by the CIA and Charles Hapgood, the work of Charles Hapgood and others that we'll be discussing and putting together the pieces <coughs> reveals a story of disinformation perpetrated by the powers that be, including the CIA, so that you could not ever know. Because if humanity know, knew about the cycles and what was coming, the world would be a very different place, I assure you. But Lee and I were talking about it tonight, and we think that humanity will react. We have plenty of time. We have a, around three decades before the major events start occurring. That's an entire lifetime, a generation. So the children that we're raising now are the ones that will get us through this period. We're the teachers. We're all here for a purpose. And, it, and all of our purposes are to move forward in whatever we're doing. And that is what we're trying to do here on the channel. Uh, the information is es esoteric, so you need to start from the beginning. If you get it piecemeal, it will be too radical to understand. So you need to slowly comprehend it from all avenues. And that's how we will, we will break it down on the channel. The problem, why is Earth getting warmer? Natural climate cycles. The riddle of the ice ages. Why is there a 26,000 year mechanism, so to speak, that falls around the Milankovitch cyclicity? Why is that? What is the magnetic reversal cycle? Why does Doug think it's 12,068 years? How does he come to this conclusion? How does it tie into religion, mythology. What's going to happen? How does it go down? Is the Adam and Eve story true? Can there be thousand mile an hour winds? Yes. 
Does the historical document, uh, documentation support this? Yes. Do I believe that magnetic reversals are episodic and periodic and regular? Yes. The data supports this. In fact, all the data I saw in academia showed that what we were missing was the missing ones. That it was a constant thing that happened forever. I can show you back 500 million years this was happening back then. The same exact thing. I can prove it to you stratigraphically. Doug proves it to you in other ways. So when we come together, the information should be groundbreaking, corroborating, and bring us to the next level. The rotation of the earth, the solar dust shell. This is a mini nova that comes off of our sun. Why does the moon have so many craters? Because it gets hit by these particles. Mercury as well. It's the closest one there. That's why it's bombarded. It, it gets hit by all of them. We only get hit by a couple of them out here. The story is becoming clearer. Mainstream science is explaining... what we're seeing and the historical documentation is proving it solar evaporation I always needed a mechanism at this point in time so sea level rise is 400 feet but right now it drops 400 feet every time in the geologic record at the middle of the Milankovitch cycle, sea level drops and I didn't have a mechanism for all of geologic time because for most of that time there was no evidence of glaciers. And now the Diehold Foundation gets dropped into my lap, the work of Douglas Vogt, and <coughs> evaporation is his mechanism and I didn't have that in my geologic toolbox. If I had a mechanism to evaporate 400 feet of ocean, like clockwork, all of my questions would have been answered. And as time moves forward, more and more of these questions continue to get answered. Flash frozen animals on the back side where the discharge, the mini nova is not happening, Everybody's safe and they're watching it on the horizon. But moments later, this hits the fan. And it gets very cold, up to 180 degrees below zero. And if you're not underground, inside, or by a fire, you're a mammoth chewing buttercups and you're dead. The ocean's evaporating. All the answers are coming true. It is too good to be true. But we're going to get to it. And I'm totally going into digression but the information is filled with suppression it's happened since the 50s the CIA has suppressed this information how to watch the New Horizons Ultima Thule flyby on New Year's Day a webcast guide well we're, we're gonna watch it watch the channel 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. boom Kuiper Belt object is KBO. Let's do it again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's a boom. <laughs> Let 
Man, there's so much to know. If you're trying to prepare, come over to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Store. We have thousands of items that you need to survive and thrive. As the planet cools, the powers that be move underground and leave you in a world of hurt. One of the most important things is radioactive meters, EMF, EMP. <clears throat> I just got a Geiger counter last week and I put it in the store. It's 88 bucks. This is the cheapest Geiger counter in history. The cheapest you could get in was 300 bucks for a quality unit, now $88. Gets you the same exact one I'm looking at, the GMC 320. It is awesome. It has graphing uh, features. It's just a quality product. I can't recommend it enough. And it is now 88 bucks. So if you've been trying to buy a quality Geiger counter and you couldn't afford it, look no further. That's all I'll say. We're about to meet the furthest object in the Kuiper Belt. And I believe that it will be surrounded by moons. It will continue to corroborate the electric universe model and all of the information was prophesized by the Hopi. It's called the quickening. Leah and I talked about it tonight and we believe that all of the people that we have met in the last several years, all of the scientists that have been put in, on our doorstep, all of the events that have manifest organically in our lives using permaculture principles are part of the plan and the path, the truth. It's the Akashic Record. It's the quickening. It's the singularity. It's predicted. It's predictable. It was on the Ten Commandments of all things. These are the mathematical codices of everything, including all the esoteric knowledge, the procession of the equinoxes, it is all foretold and it is all part of the information that will be revealed on this channel as we move forward. We started a Minds page at Minds.com backslash Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Come check it out. We only have 26 subscribers, less than 200 views. One of our videos gets that in eight minutes. This venue is embarrassing. Some people support it, but we're on it as a backup to YouTube and Patreon and Facebook. At some point, it may be more difficult to do this. So we are on Steemit at Solar Shutdown, Mines at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Patreon, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, <coughs> YouTube, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and Facebook. The impactor hypothesis is real. The only problem is the impactor is a plasma sheath that gets blown off the sun that we witness. And it's coming. Not like that. More like that. Many people predict the end game to be 2035. Douglas Brian Vogt, he has a specific date. It's like September 2047. I hope he's right. But the amount of information that I need to absorb is exponential. And I have sacrificed four hours today to it. And it will be three or four hours a day for the next week before I can have an excellent conversation with the man. And then we'll move forward. And that's a boom. Hope you got something out of the video. We're all in it together. We'll make it. We have time. You got to make it through the next grand solar minimum, which is the impending problem. Not the big one. The big one comes later. It's for the generations we're raising now. Will we teach them what they need to know about the truth 
of the universe? I hope so. And I hope you join us on our journey to find the truth. And that's a boom. Be safe. We love you.